Praise the Lord. Welcome to Kingdom Power Broadcast. I'm Jack Dilday sitting here with Rusty Wilson. We're so glad that you have joined us today for another few moments of time that we're going to be able to share the word with you. We've mm -hmm. got a great word today. We're looking forward to, to bringing it to you today. We hope that you're having a, a great day today as well. Uh, you know, I say it all the time that this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I mm -hmm. choose to, regardless what, what I'm having to deal with or what I'm having to go through, Amen. I choose to rejoice because this Amen. is the day he made for us. That's right. He didn't get. He wasn't surprised by the battle you had to fight today. No, no. You know, and and so uh, we're excited to bring a word to you today. We trust you're having a great week, and and such and so. Um, we want to just get right into it, so we'll have plenty of time uh, to to talk about something today. We want to share a little bit with you concerning the scripture of Matthew chapter five verse six, um, that uh, really. Is not a is not an unfamiliar scripture. It is a familiar scripture with both of us, um, from from all of us probably mm -hmm. that that we have uh, read and heard many times. It is one of, I think it's in the middle of the Beatitudes. Yes. Um, and Matthew chapter five verse six says, "Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled." Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I uh, I just got back from a conference over in Richmond, Indiana, and uh, ministered there just a, a few days ago. And it was it, the, the title of the conference, the name of the conference is called Pursuing His Presence Conference. And uh, tremendous word that went, that went forth through, through the whole conference. Uh, you, can, you can find it online. You can go to First Assembly of God Church Facebook page in Richmond. I think it says First Assembly of God of Richmond. Uh, is what it says, but it's in Richmond, Indiana. And uh, we uh, was there Sunday through the next Thursday evening and uh, had a tremendous conference, several different speakers, and, and just the word went forth. We had a great time uh, while we were there. But the key scripture to that conference mm -hmm. is Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and so we want to talk about that with you for just a few moments. You know, Rusty, I think that when uh, we was talking just a few minutes ago before we actually uh, went on the air, that when we get thirsty in the natural realm, um, I think for most folks, a good cold glass of water quenches the thirst quicker and easier than anything. Yes, amen. And... Uh, so when we get thirsty and we drink the water that quenches the thirst, uh, spiritual, of course, the the only thing that's, that that quenches the the, the hunger mm -hmm. uh, in the natural is food, right? Of some kind, amen. Yeah, of something, exactly. Some quenches it better than others, exactly. But I believe that whenever uh, this is when we begin to long for his spirit, mm -hmm. uh, the spirit of God to be poured out upon us, I believe that's the spiritual thirsting yes. uh, that the scripture is talking about. And the hunger, I believe, is when we begin to long for the word. Mm -hmm. you Amen. Know? Um, you know, we, that is part of revival. Yes. Being revived. Amen. 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 You know, uh, there's a scripture that, that talks about, uh, and I don't know if I can call where it's at, uh, but there's a scripture that talks about uh, Eating the word, and, and it doesn't say that with those words, but mm -hmm. but that's what it's talking about: consuming, consuming the yeah. word. Yeah, and uh, that's why I believe that when we are spiritually hungry, mm -hmm. uh, we need to go to the word, and right. that becomes our food. Amen. Um, that becomes our spiritual food, and the, and then the thirst thing I believe is the spirit of the God is is the spirit of God, yes. the Holy Spirit. Yes, and and that you know when we learn to to eat of the word of God and drink of the spirit of God, then we'll be full. That's right. You know, we'll be filled with his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Those that hunger and thirst after living right. Yes. That's what it's saying. Amen. Those Amen. that hunger and thirst after, after living a righteous life, mm -hmm. after seeking after God, uh, you know, they, they shall be filled. It doesn't say they might or could be. Mm, they shall uh, be. They shall be. You know, and, and so there's seven points that, that we want to kind of mention to you today, and I don't know how much we'll get through uh, all of them, 
But uh, if I may share the tr passion go translation right ahead. real quick, absolutely. From the passion translation, verse six it says, "How enriched you are when you crave righteousness, yes. for you will be surrounded with fruitfulness." Wow, amen, amen, <laughs> amen. When we crave righteousness, yes, amen. And and I believe there's many times that. I, this is just Jack talking. This yeah. is just myself. Mm -hmm. I believe there's times that we crave it, but we don't recognize what we're craving. Right. You know, we don't Amen. really, even as born again children of God, especially, we're craving that, but we don't really know it when we get it, or we don't know how to go about getting it. You know, I believe, you know, I've never been a big water drinker, mm -hmm. ever in my mm -hmm. life. Never mm -hmm. been a big, I, I worked construction for many years. We kept a water jug on the job. Uh, right. And I would I would drink some during the day, you know, just to go by to get a drink or, mm -hmm. or you know, have a cup full of whatever, uh, you know, but, but never been a big water drinker. I drink more water today than I've ever drank in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, But there is something about that that sometimes you crave that. Yes. And really yes. water is probably the best thing we could drink. Exactly. You know, exactly. Uh, of anything. I think that's been proven. Uh, water is the best drink that we could ever, that we could have mm -hmm. or that we could want mm -hmm. uh, in the natural realm. And sometimes you crave water. I don't like water. Right. I didn't want to drink water. Exactly. But I knew if I would drink a big glass of water or mm -hmm. maybe even two or three glasses of water, mm -hmm. I'd feel better. you feel better, yeah. It's like the dehydration mm -hmm. of your body. When you drink it, it tastes so good. Right. Whether you like water or not. Right. It's what you find out what you need, like you're talking right. about, on, on what, when a lot of people don't understand what they need, right. but they receive it. Yep. They get a hold of that. Yep. Amen. You know, un, I, I've got a note written here. Unsatisfied spiritual hunger mm -hmm. produces sin. Mm -hmm. When we are hungry, spiritually speaking, mm -hmm. and we try to fill it with something that we don't need, right. eventually we wind up in sin. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when these sins begin to, to, to consume our thoughts and actions it's a sign that we're not filling ourselves with the bread of life, exactly. which of course John six thirty five talks about. Right, you know the bread of life mm -hmm. and and such. But we're we're filling it with some with other things, and and we want to compare the two for just a few minutes today mm -hmm. uh, with you, and and compare the two of physical spiritual uh, physical hunger and thirst against the spiritual hunger and thirst, mm -hmm. and what we fill our bodies with compared to what we fill our our spirit with. Amen. Yes. And uh, and so. You know, unsatisfied spiritual hunger breeds selfishness. Mm -hmm. You know, just like physical hunger, our desires for the things of the spirit, our unmet desires mm -hmm. for the things of the spirit, causes selfishness. Mm -hmm. We believe we believe our own needs are most important. You know, we want what we want, and we want it now. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when our spirit begins to hunger for the Lord, but we don't feed our souls by spending time with Him in His Word and in prayer then our level of selfishness grows. Mm -hmm. you know, we begin to, to, to fill it with what we want. Right. You know? Exactly and, right. Uh, so, you know, it breeds selfishness. You know, I want us to look at these, at these seven points real quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, seven ways to cultivate spiritual hunger. Mm -hmm. You know, now there's things and times that we uh, fill our bodies with things that we don't need. Right. You know, we've all... And, and we'll get into a little bit of this, but, but we've all come in from work after a hard day's work, and we're hungry. Yes. You know, and sometimes we'll snack before we get our meal. Mm-hmm. You know, like most every day. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. <coughs> Excuse me. Exactly. You know, lots of times I've done that mm -hmm. uh, in my lifetime, of course. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we snack, we'll look for something and, and while, while Lisa's fixing dinner or or while, you know, we're getting ready to go eat dinner or whatever, you know, we'll, I'll find something else to snack on. Um, but seven ways to cultivate spiritual hunger. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have to understand that what Jesus said, that those who hunger and thirst after him or after mm -hmm. righteousness mm -hmm. will be blessed. Exactly right. You know, we don't always think of a hunger and a thirst as a blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, we, in fact, sometimes we think of it as a curse. Exactly you know, right. Because we stay hungry or right. we stay thirsty. You know, and I have to tell you that I believe the majority reason for that is we're not eating the right stuff. No. 
Exactly. We're not eating the right food. Exactly right. You know, um, in, in a lot of people's minds, hunger is a bad thing. And if, if that's how we've thought of hunger, then according to Jesus' words in Matthew 5, 6, we have to start rethinking mm -hmm. about hunger differently. Mm -hmm. Because he said, he that hungers and thirsts, he that gets hungry for righteousness mm -hmm. will be filled. Exactly. You know, and, uh, you know, somebody asked, well, you know, is hunger a real problem? We know across the world hunger is a problem. Right. You know, yeah. You see all the pictures. You see all the the, the advertisements. Mm -hmm. um, but is hunger a, really a problem for me or for you? Um, I get hungry every day. Mm -hmm. You get hungry every day. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. No problem at all. Because we have a remedy for it. Mm -hmm. We eat. Right. <laughs> That's it. Unless you're not feeling good. Yeah. You, yeah. You're hungry. Yes. Yeah. Hunger only becomes a problem when you don't fix it. Right. You know, exactly. And, and we're going to talk spiritually. God designed the human body with a built-in hunger mechanism mm -hmm. so we will feed our bodies on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And it's a great system. Oh, absolutely. You know, I'm um, thankful he did. Yes. As long as we have food available, hunger's not a problem. Mm -mm. It helps us remember when our bodies need sustenance. Mm -hmm. you know, when we absolutely. need substance, when we need food. Um, if we don't have an appetite then we, know, we don't get the basic nutrition necessary to sustain our Absolutely. life. Absolutely. You know? And we have to have an appetite for God and for mm -hmm. the Word of God Amen. in order for us to get the, the right nutrition we need, spiritually speaking. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I'm certain that many of you listening to this, to this broadcast today uh, have had teenagers. Mm -hmm. I raised four of them. I know that teenagers can eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, teenagers are growing and their bodies need extra nutrition. Right. You know, every one of us are still growing. All mm -hmm. of us are still getting closer to God every day. Yes, yes. That means we need the extra nutrition. Amen. You know, we can't pray enough. We can't study enough. Yes. You know, for everything that we need. That's right. You know, the first thing we want to mention of, of the seven is you got to think about food. Yeah. You know. You know, we have we, we find a food that we really like. We have to choose something and then take a moment to contemplate why we enjoy it so much. Exactly. Think about why we really enjoy it. Amen. Um, thinking of, and thinking about that food can make you hungry. Absolutely. In the natural world. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I love exactly. steak and potatoes. Right. You know, that's one of my favorite meals. Mm -hmm. You know, if I think about it very long, I want to go get a steak. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> so it's the same way with God that we need to focus our thoughts on him. Mm -hmm. And if we think about the experiences that we had with him in the past yeah. and consider why those memories are so precious to us, mm -hmm. hearing testimonies during church services helps us to do that. Mm -hmm. You think about it. When you think about food, what food do you need? Spiritual food, natural food. You know, it's talking about, you're talking about uh, blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness. Right. Matthew six thirty three says, "But seek ye first yes. the kingdom of God and His righteousness." righteousness. Yes. When you seek Him, you start feeding Amen. on His Word. Amen. You know, in thinking back as a child growing up. Mm -hmm. In church, I was taken to church from the time I was seven days old, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, failed God many times. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Just because I was raised in church and served God most all my life doesn't mean I've never failed because mm -hmm. I have yes. many, many times. But I was I, I was born on a Sunday and was taken to church the next Sunday, mm -hmm. and and basically been in church for all of my life. Yes, uh, same here. You know, for the most part, uh, you know, I probably missed enough Sundays in my life that I could count on one hand and have fingers left over. Right. You know, that's just been my life. Right. Has been church. And of course, the last, you know, 30, 40 years we've been the ministry of preaching. Of course it would be. But even, even as a child growing up, even as a teenager, even as becoming an adult and leaving home, you know, church was a, a major part of my life. Absolutely. And, uh, and such. And so uh, I remember hearing 
certain people in the church as a child growing up. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, used to we had what they call testimony services. Yes, yeah. You know, you remember them. Yes, uh, you Amen. know, we're in the middle of the service. You know, uh, what they always did where I was raised, and I was raised in Chicago at this age, uh, and that is that you know, the preacher, whoever was conducting the service, would call somebody up to to hold the testimony mm -hmm. service. Well, they testify and then give others the opportunity to do that. Right. And uh, a couple of people would stand up and testify. They'd play a song in the middle. Right. You know, wait for another couple, <laughs> two or three more to testify. They'd play another song. Amen. You know, and, <laughs> and you know, if you really wasn't careful, uh, there was a lady in our church that, you know, she'd get to testify and she'd get to shout and yeah. carry on. <laughs> Amen. And, and, you know, just get excited about what all God had done for her. Yes. And then by that time, somebody else got excited and, and somebody else would run around the building. I mean, yep. you know, and just, just thinking of the good things that God had done Amen. for them. Amen. Amen. You know? And as children, we would always like those services because that meant there probably wasn't going to be no preaching. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, it's going to be a quick service. Yeah, that's right. We're going to get out pretty quick here. <laughs> You know, An hour and a half later, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> but uh, you know, hearing testimonies during church service yeah. helps us to to think of of the great things He's done for exactly. us. Exactly. You know, we say it every single broadcast. Mm -hmm. It's time to testify. It's time to testify. Yeah. You know, you know why it's time to testify because somebody on your job, mm -hmm. somebody in your house, somebody in the grocery store, somebody you're going to have a conversation with mm -hmm. today needs to hear about Jesus. Exactly. Every day. Especially the one that says, how did you get through that? Yeah. Oh, let me tell you. Yep. Let me tell you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know what time it is. Yeah. It's time, time to testify. testify. Yeah. You know, testimonies causes us to want the experiences, encounters with God that we hear about. That's right. You know. Amen. And, uh, and so then another, another, uh, another way to cultivate the spiritual hunger mm -hmm. is not just to think about food, but to put food before us. Oh, yes. You know, set it before us. You know, have you ever experienced a time when smelling or seeing food made you hungry? Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. You know, uh, the same thing with, with God, you know, that can happen spiritually when we go to church. Mm -hmm. We come in, we sense the presence of God is yes. there, and and that causes a hunger and a thirst on mm -hmm. the inside of us. Uh, well, you know, somebody said, well, you know, I'm not really hungry. Let them set a plate of food in front of them. That's right. Something changes. Exactly right. It just does. Amen. It just happens. You know. Yeah. You get you get into a service and you sense yeah. the, and all of a sudden you just want to start praising and worshiping. Right. Because it get, draws that in. Because there is a part in us yeah. as the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit. God has put that in us by the Holy Spirit. Amen. The desire. That's right. And we got to, to desire. Worship. That's right. You say I want to desire more and more. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. Amen. 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 That's right. Third thing is we have to recognize mm -hmm. our need. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us have been so busy at times that we forget to eat. Yes. You know, or that we haven't taken time to eat. Right. And so uh, sometimes we get so focused on the job that we're doing, we don't take time or we forget. Mm -hmm. We look at our clock and say, man, it's already 2.30. I missed yeah. lunch. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Such as that. Now, that don't happen very often anymore to me, but it used to. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially if your stomach's growling, like, yeah. why am I? <laughs> but the, we do that in our spiritual lives yes. as well. We can get so busy with life, so busy with important things like jobs and families mm -hmm. and such, that we forget what it is that we really need communion, mm -hmm. that we really need communion with him, with our, with our Heavenly Father. Amen. You know? And, and even in the ministry, it's not just secular people, it's not just lay people, it's people in the ministry mm -hmm. get so focused and so busy. I've had to kept, I've caught myself many times, yeah. getting so busy, caught up in the studio, caught mm -hmm. up on the recording, get caught up on taping programs, mm -hmm. you know, that sometimes it seems like I just don't have time or I forget yeah. to pray, exactly, you know, to spend time with God. Absolutely. You know, and, and so we have to recognize the need that we have. Yes. Um, you know, God puts all sorts of desires in our hearts, but the most most critical need is for Himself. Amen. Amen. It's for God Himself. We cannot neglect ourselves from receiving Amen. the Word, receiving from Him. Because one one statement I, He gave to me years ago: If we neglect our physical, man, the spiritual man, the feeding of the Word, we neglect our physical man. Yes. The manifestation yes. of the word. Amen. You know, 
<coughs> Excuse me. The fourth thing is um, healthy versus unhealthy mm-hmm. hunger. Mm-hmm. You know, there is a healthy hunger, mm-hmm. and then there's an unhealthy hunger. Mm-hmm. You know, there is times, there are times that, you know, and I think I've mentioned this a few weeks ago, that Lisa and I both this year in January began a, uh, <laughs> I just had a thought that says, I was preparing to die. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we began preparing to die. Right. It. Die it, yeah. <laughs> On, in yeah, January, exactly. and sometimes it feels like we're going to die, but we're yeah. not. Yeah, <laughs> but we're not. But but you know, there are days and times that even since January that I have created is it, it, I haven't created, but it's been on the inside of me for an unhealthy hunger of mm-hmm. things that I miss, things that I want. Right. You know, things that are not good for me, but I still want them. Mm-hmm. I love honey buns. Right. You know, I want a honey bun. Right. I've had one honey bun since the second day of this year. Wow. <laughs> You know, and you look at the nutrition, 490 exactly, calories. Exactly, 490 You're like, okay. calories, 61 <laughs> carbs, 5 proteins. Exactly. You know, so so when I look at that, I do have a little more discipline than I yeah. used to. Yeah, I've always known honey buns wasn't the best thing for you to eat. Exactly. But I can look at it today and say, okay, I don't have to have that. Exactly. You know, I, it's, it's the determination yes. to yes. get to where you need to be for your health. Determination to get to where you need to be for your spiritual health. Amen. Spiritual health. Amen. You know, God has placed a healthy hunger on the inside of every human being, mm-hmm. and that is our desire for Him. Him. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And uh, you know, exactly. So, so blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, mm-hmm. for they shall be filled or Amen. satisfied. Amen. You know, if we only eat healthy meals one day a week. Mm-hmm. And junk the other six days. How healthy would we be? Mm-hmm. Right. You know. Well, you, you notice number five: mm-hmm. avoid junk food. Mm-hmm. But there's also junk spiritual food. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's one thing. Now, the chips we had to push them out the door. Right. And you know. Right. And the I know we're going a little fast on this, but it got my attention is what I've been doing. Mm-hmm. We've been doing. Number six: exercise more. Yeah. When I got determined back in August that I had to make a change. I had to go and get, and I, you know, got a trainer that I'm working right. with at the gym. Right. I used to work with him uh, before I semi-retired. But anyway, exercise. I made the determination I'm going to get out there and I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. Then, 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 you know, uh, Sabrina got a uh, determ. you know, we got, she got, I need to get out there too. And it, it wasn't a sure. criticism, right. but, one of us is going to have to start someplace. Amen. And so it encourages each other to say, let's do this together. You Amen. Know? Amen. You know, even after we're saved, after we're baptized with the Holy Ghost, mm-hmm. and, you know, we're serving God, it's vital for us to keep receiving that spiritual nourishment. Right. You know, and, and uh, uh, you know, we should want the junk food. And, and by junk food, we're talking... Uh, you know, by by mindlessly spending hours on our phones. Right. You know, um, by by watching television for mm-hmm. hours a day or night. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and doing different things, that, and that may not be wrong within itself. Right. Neither one. Right. I right. play a game on my tablet. Sure. You know, from time to time, and and I have a favorite television show I like mm-hmm. to watch. You know, so that doesn't make it wrong. Um, you know, it, it's just like I can eat a candy bar mm-hmm. sometimes if I want one. Right. But you got to do everything in moderation. Exactly. Yeah. Not all in one setting. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. Right. I can't sit down and eat the whole package anymore. Exactly. Right. <laughs> you know, and, and just like you said, number six is exercise more. Yes. Uh, you know, after a hard day's work or a period of exercise, it increases our appetites. Mm-hmm. It makes the food t- taste better. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know. We have to consider that fact from a spiritual perspective. Mm-hmm. Are we exercising spiritually enough to work up an appetite? Absolutely, yes. You know, do we testify of God's goodness and, and when he prompts us to? Mm-hmm. Do we pray? Do we study his word yes. enough? Mm-hmm. You know, um, exercising spiritually, um, and, and I don't mean this in the natural realm so much physically, but getting on our knees to pray. Yes. You know, that's an that's uh, exercise in our faith. You know, while I don't mind, and I speak for myself, while I, do, while, while I don't mind speaking in public, 
I don't mind. I don't. Doesn't matter to me how big the crowd is. Doesn't right. bother me a bit if it's small crowd, big crowd, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, doesn't doesn't bother me. But I have to tell you, I get a little nervous at the thought of just talking one on one with someone. Right. Oh yeah. You know. And when I say speaking one on one, I'm talking about witnessing. I'm talking about mm-hmm. you know talking to them about Christ. Yeah, I can do that all day long from the pulpit. Oh, absolutely. Don't bother me a bit. Is that one on one? One on one. One on one. That need. gets me out of my comfort zone, yeah. and that's an exercise well, I need to work on. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm with you. Um, on it's a spiritual yeah. workout for me. Amen. So Amen. when we engage in the spiritual exercises, we naturally develop a deeper hunger and thirst mm-hmm. for God and His righteousness. Amen. Amen. And the last thing that we've got just two, three minutes left. The last thing, number seven, is asking God for a hunger. Mm -hmm. We have to ask God for a hunger sometimes. And when you do, get ready. Yes. Because he's going to give you a hunger. Amen. You're going to want more and more and more. Amen. Amen. We can pray and ask God to help uh, us develop a, a spiritual appetite. Mm-hmm. You know, if we ask God to make us hungry for righteousness, He will hear and answer that Absolutely. prayer. Absolutely. You know, if if you're born again, you've been saved, baptized with the Holy Ghost, you need those foundational experiences, mm-hmm. and you'll need a hunger to seek and receive them. That's right. Uh, you know, so so we have to ask Him for a hunger. You know, I know if I'm praying enough. Mm-hmm. You know, and how great is my desire for him right you know nobody else knows mm-hmm. nobody else knows how much i how many, how many hours or minutes or anything i spend in prayer a day sure. i don't know how many hours or minutes you spend mm-hmm. in prayer a day mm-hmm. and and not that we should know right but i know if i'm not spending enough mm-hmm. that's what i'm saying exactly you know, i know if i'm not spending enough time in prayer with him uh then i have to do something about it absolutely yes you sir know? Yes, sir. And and so you listening to this broadcast, you have to do something about that. If you're not spending enough time, you mm-hmm. have to pray for God to give you a spiritual hunger and thirst for righteousness because yes. it will cause us to seek the Lord and be full, be exactly. filled. And and that's what our souls need for survival. Amen. That's why Jesus could say, blessed are they which hunger and thirst for righteousness. Yes. For they shall be filled. They shall be filled. Yeah. That's what we have to have. We have to, we have to hunger and thirst to live right. That's and the good thing is. about it is, it's not just a fulfilling. No, it's an overflow. Right. Yes. <laughs> overflow. It's not just a satisfaction. Exactly. It, it does satisfy us absolutely, yeah. but it's not just that. Yeah. Amen. But it runs over. Over. Yes. And onto the next person. Amen. Onto the next person. Amen. Amen. We are so glad that you joined us yes, today. Yes, thank and, you so and much. so excited that, that you could yeah. uh, be a part of this broadcast today. And so uh, if you'd like to contact us at, at Kingdom Power Broadcast, mm-hmm. uh, you can do so by writing to us at Kingdom News Now, P.O. Box 924, Anderson, Missouri, 64831. Mm-hmm. And you can call us if you have a prayer request or praise report or anything you'd like to, to talk to us about. You can call us at area code 573-375. 0219 mm-hmm. and we will be glad to pray with you about any need that you have and uh, we are excited uh, just to know that that hopefully you've been blessed today yes uh, by this program and and uh, so uh, we want to leave you with this thought that we said it a while ago we talked about it that you know what time it is and and uh, uh, that you need the exercise yes you need and don't take that as offensive Right. You need to exercise. I need to exercise. Yes. All of us Amen. need to exercise. Oh, and one of the spiritual exercises that we need to do is testify, testify to others yes. of what Christ has done Amen. for us. That's why we tell you after every broadcast what time it is. Yes. It's, it's time, time to, to testify. testify. Amen. God Amen. bless you. God bless you.